So, we've been sent something new to the UK market to try. Uh, this is a portable power station. Jackery have sent us this to uh, use on the channel. Uh, and so this is going to be my video of uh, looking at it, making sure, well, not making sure, showing that it works, and then of course we are going to take it apart. So this portable power station, as I said, is made by Jackery. Uh, this is the UK version, as you see, oh, you should see, you can see in the box that is in American style outlet. Hopefully ours will be UK, for this is their UK release of this type of product. <coughs> and here she is. Here we are. Oh, that is first rip off. That's rip off bit. Boop. Can now read the screen. And full disclosure, yes, I have plugged it in and charged it so this video can have some content because otherwise it wouldn't last very long in the shipping battery status. So we've got two USB ports. 5 volts, 2.4 amps, one UK 230 volt outlet, uh, 200 watt running and 400 watt peak output, and a 12 volt 10 amp output. Now my usual viewers will know exactly what we're going to be doing with the 12 volt 10 amp, 10 amp output later on. Not in this video, but in another video. This is what this is for. Let's see, where are the claims? So have a claimed capacity of, what is it, it's 241.9 watt hours. Now I have measured this and I will show you a clip of me measuring later and the results that I got. But like I say, this is the UK version for their UK launch. So in the box you get obviously your power station. There is this bag in which contains the mains charger. Obviously UK mains plug for the UK and a 12 volt power adapter to plug in your car's 12 volt power source and the other one for the input. And I presume there must be, there are also instructions in the box, but uh, you know how I feel about instructions really. But, oh, hello. Come out. Ah, it's a little portable power station shaped card. That's quite nice. Blah, blah, warranty, excitement, and the usual, well, not usual, but instructions of all its etc, etc, 241.9 watt hours, 12 to 30 volt DC input for charging, 200 watt, uh, 200 watt maximum output on the 24, 400 volt six, carport, 12 volt 10 amps, like I said, lithium ion, Blah blah blah, isn't waterproof, don't get it wet. That's uh, pretty much all we need to see in those instructions. The other thing that they sent me that I completely forgot to show you, which is difficult to forget to be fair, is a massive set of, wait, I can't even get them all in the shot, uh, solar panels. Let me uh, bring the camera back a bit so you can actually see these. So when you are outside on your travelings and you want to charge up your Jackery uh, power, power station, you can purchase these solar panels to charge it with. Like I said, it will accept any DC input from, what did I say, 8 to 30 volts or something, and it'll charge them. Char it has got its own built-in M is it MPTT or M MPPT solar controller? So it optimizes the charging current. Uh, let's see about these. I oh. know oh, there's more instructions and things in here. Get out. Instructions, user guides, put in the sun. Yeah. More user uh, warranty, not a little power warranty thing. 
all these things come with a year's warranty. Uh, oh, it's, it's got a magnetic clasp, but God, it's still not in shot. So magnetic clasp to keep it shut. I presume this is going to be a little stand of some variety. Yes, yeah, a stand to keep it upright. Uh, let's see if I can... Oh, it takes up the whole bench. These aren't flexible panels. I would like to point out they are solid. It's either glass or plastic. Feels like plastic, which is fine. It's less breakable. Uh, I presume there's a wire somewhere. Let me just flap it shut till I see if I can find the... Ha! That would make sense. Ta-da! So in here... Let me bring it over a bit. There is also a USB-C output and a USB output, so you can charge things directly off the solar panels. Right, there's a thing up here that says... Can you read that? No, neither can I. Uh, peak power, 100 watts, cell efficiency, 23%, which is much a muchness for solar panels. Uh, 18 volt output, Mac maximum current, 5.5 amps, open circuit, 21 volts, short circuit, 6.6 amps. 2.4 amps on USB-A, 3 amps on USB-C, blah, blah, blah. And that is your wire that plugs straight into the power station to charge it. Now, let's see if we can uh, plug it in under the lights in the workshop and charge with it. So I have done work with solar panels previously, and what I can tell you is bigger is better. There are no shortcuts with solar panels. If you see a solar panel the size of a sheet of A4 paper that says 100 watts, it's lying. It's very, very lying. When the weather's nice, we will take these outside and I'll show you it working in real bright sunshine. I'll also show you my solar setup and show you how much, how many panels you need to get what current from. So if we plug that in there, it charges. Can you see? Right, let me turn it on. Not that we're going to get a lot of power out of one light, but you can see the uh, the light there is on. It <laughs> is so low from this light, because it's not sunshine, this is just ambient light, which does work, but nothing works as well as absolute brilliant sunshine. Even the slightest amount of clouds will reduce your solar power output by a staggering amount. Same as dust, dirt, any of these things. Uh, I think it was Google did a thing on their solar farms that simply by keeping the panels clean and washing the slight dust off them, they got 20% more output from them all the time just by keeping them clean. So the dust, dust, any sort of, anything that blocks the light makes a huge difference to solar panels. So at the moment, it's fully charged. I've, I've showed you it being fully charged. Right, and it has a claimed rating of 200 41.9 watt hours. So I use my little USB tester. Uh, I'll put a clip of it on the screen of me testing it. I uh, ran it all the way down till it cuts out, which is its flat point. And then you read, plug the tester back in uh, on something that's got voltage and it saves where it cut out. And I got, well, 244, 244 watt hours. So it actually, it's actually, the claimed capacity that you get. Not like other some Chinese power banks that have had that claimed a massive capacity and then it's like less than half of that. This one actually comes with the capacity that it says on it. Here is the USB uh, tester that I was using. So the last time it was plugged in, it ran this flat. So when we plug it in this time, when we plug it in this time, turn the USB on, right. It lights up, and can you see those flashing numbers? No, you can't. I can, I can barely see them. Let me see if I can zoom you in on it. Too much, too much. Right, so can you see on there where it says 243.87 watt hours? And I'll read the red numbers off to you. It says 40. 8,599 milliamp hours. Now bear in mind, 
the 48,000 milliamp hours was at five volts with a two amp draw and I was using a adjustable, uh, well, an adjustable load. It's got a switch on it there between one amp and two amp. So it was drawing five volts at two amps to work out the amp hours and the watt hours are watt hours, no, it's, uh, which are watt hours. It wouldn't matter if it was one amp or two amp or five volts or 12 volts. You would still end up with the same watt hours. So that's 200, well, 244 and they're claimed on the bottom is 200 and, where is it? I lost it now. 241.9 watt hours. So it's actually given us more watt hours than their rated output, which is, which is spectacular. Everything else is fairly straightforward. The uh, USB, have I got a USB thing I can plug into? Wait a minute, wait. I do, I can charge up my torchy here, plug in the USB thing, press the USB button to make it go, and there we are, the USB torch is now charging away, and it's consuming such little power that the outputs, no, no, oh god, it says one watt, there you go, I'm outputting one watt of power to my torch. Okay, so that, they work, that's great, can now I can turn them off, yep, smashing, here's one for us, how about supplying our 12 volt battery, or our 12 volt power supply, our adjustable power supply, with power straight out of the jackery. So if we plug that in there, okay, so this will be my first thing that I found slightly wrong with this product, which it will work for fine for Americans that plug in that way and everyone else that goes in that way. But in the UK, all of our flex come down the bottom, so that's quite a sharp bend for uh, UK Flex, mm, I don't know how you would solve that problem because you don't really want to put it in sideways, you know, if you don't want it in that way but that could have done with, uh, you might have to sit it on something so your flex isn't at quite a harsh angle Nonetheless, it is plugged in, alright let's turn it on Fan ran briefly, there's a fan in there and uh, can you see, you know, that power supply is now lit up, it is being powered by that. Let me zoom in on the display so I don't have to move it. Zoom in, you can see that it is consuming 15 watts. I imagine that if you actually give it a fairly large load, the fan will come on and perhaps stay on, but it does appear to have active cooling, which is nice. So, well, that works. That's good. Uh, the only thing I don't have to hand is anything 12 volts to plug into the 12 volty thing. That's a shame. Uh, no, I don't have anything 12 volt based. Okay, so I don't have a 12 anything 12 volts to plug in here just now, but believe me, we will be using that in a later video. Right, so we've seen the pure sine wave inverter work. We've seen it do USB. I suppose we should uh, take it apart now. Right, we've got Phillips screws in that side and a couple of Torx on, not Torx, Hex on there. So, as I was saying, Jackery UK, that is a terrible screwdriver. As I was saying, Jackery are launching the UK version of this product and they contacted me to do a video for their UK launch. Now, normally, I don't really, you know, take things, like just random things that people are sending. But seeing as I was actually looking at power stations, because we were going to use one in a different video, I said yes to actually getting this one, so we can use it in other videos. And they were kind enough to provide this one, and provide a discount code for the release this month which I'll put in the description down below so if you do decide to buy one they're available on their uh, Amazon uh, website not their Amazon, you know, their Amazon shop on Amazon, funnily enough uh, from there and use the discount code, you get 20% off if you're going to buy one I don't know if this will be the only one they have on there at the moment because they make uh, bigger ones as well. And that's all those screws out, hopefully. Right, one, 
no, no, is that, is this one out? Is it loose? It's making loose noises. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, we'll just count this done. And we'll take these. Uh, what was I saying? No, I, um, Amazon discount shop. You can buy them on there. Uh, their UK version of their own website is not up and running yet, but it is going to be, I've been assured. I'm just going to start all these and then undo them. Get them half out. And then we will have a look inside and see what the uh, insides are like. If it's as good inside as it is outside, I will be genuinely happy. Okay, this time should just fall apart. Nice. Here we go. Let's tip it that way. Da, 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 da. Whoo, look at all those cells. Nice. So in there, can you see all the purple purple cells? That is the batteries. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of charge circuitry. Woo! Nice, okay, I wonder if we can get the rest of this out. How far can we go? Do these just pop out to hold the two halves together? They do? That's nice. The halves of the cases aren't screwed to each other. They're screwed at these tabs to lock it together. That's, that's quite a nice feature. We'll just, uh Being... Not entirely uh, electronically minded. I'm going to say that a lot of that on top there is to do with the uh, mains output. The rect, not the rectifier, well, the, not the, the opposite of a rectifier, the sine wave generator. The inverter, that's the word I was looking for. Right, let's see if we can get any more of this out. Okay, so the screw on this side for holding the batteries in, fine, not a problem. The screw on this side, however, you see down in there, it lines up perfectly with all of the uh, battery terminals and the big red battery terminal. I'll need to find an insulated screwdriver to go and poke down in there, because otherwise there'll be a large fire. Okay, an insulated screwdriver, take two. Right, we've got the screw, all the screws out. Well, they're loose anyway. Which should let us take out this bit. Hopefully. Which it does. It allows us to remove the outer cover. The, uh, the other side of the cover, I should say. Right, that brings us this whole side off. Uh, can you see the the conform conformal coating on the board? So that's to give it a bit of uh, moisture protection from, say, condensation, uh, that sort of thing. Nothing else, just uh, condensation. It's not waterproof in any way. We've got nice beefy cables going up to the 12 volt supply. They're on their own uh, plug as well. I don't see a uh, fuse of any kind, there's no uh, inline fuse in this. So unless it's fused somewhere else in the board, I do see the big, there's a big 40 amp fuse up here and there's a corresponding 40 amp fuse on the other board, but I don't see one for the 12 volts, which is interesting. That's just a uh, ground and positive. <laughs> look how look how thin the mains voltage is, the uh, main voltage wire is, look. Right, so there's the plug, there's your, these little teeny tiny spindly wires. And if you're wondering why the 12 volt has got such big thick wires and the uh, 240 volt has got a little teeny, teeny tiny thin wires, the higher the voltage you run for the same current, you can get away with using a lot thinner wire 
because you're using a lot higher voltage. Uh, that's that's uh, as much as I can tell for that board, for what there is. I presume the rest of it's just the controls for the front. That's good, that's good. So, uh, another reason for taking this apart to look at it is the UK's right to repair law will come into effect shortly, which will require companies to, well, supply you with spare parts so that you can fix things and actually make them available for fixing. So they can't just say to you, oh, you're not supposed to fix that, that won't be a thing anymore. They'll actually be required by law to supply you with spares to repair things and be able to have things repaired. Mostly cut down on electrical waste so it's not all going to landfill, etc. Now, I, I was trying to see if I could find a way into this box without destroying it and taking it apart so we could see who makes the cells. But I'm afraid I cannot find a way in without destroying the box, which is a shame. Uh, we could look up who makes purple ones, but that's not really a thing. So I'm going to now try and count them. So that looks like one, two, three, four. So 28 cells to get 14 volts. I can't maths out, you're gonna to have to go yourself. So that's obviously there's some in series, some in parallel. But this is this is nice. As does this conformally coated as well? Uh yes, it appears to have a conformal coating. The top top board definitely does. I can see the shine of coating. This is nice. This is nicely made, it's nicely put together. I don't see any anything horrendously wrong, you know, there's nothing, oh there, like I said, there's the other um, 40 amp fuse. So it's not the easiest in the world to take apart, but it is certainly disassemblable and repair or replaceable if anything was to go wrong. Well, my first port if anything was to go wrong would be to open up and check that the two fuses are still uh, fuses and intact. Granted, that this one is uh, going to be a board, a board out, unsolder, resolder job, but it's not the end of the world if it keeps it going. I'm still curious as to. It must monitor the output for the 12 volts and cap it at 10 amps or cut it off at 10 amps because I don't see a fuse for it. So it doesn't must not have its own direct fuse unless there's anything on the 12 volt side. So that's a 12 volt bit. 12 volt sides, 12 volt side there. Don't see any other small fuses. Nope. Okay. Let me just uh, reassemble this uh, for you. Thanks. Well, it's back together, and in what I think is a record, I have managed to not have any bits left over, except the feet, that is, but I'll just use a blob of hot glue and stick them back on. And it's back together. And it still works, which is also a first. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for watching and sticking with us while we had a look at this Jackery Explorer 240 power station of the UK variety. And thank you for to Jackery for sending us this so we can play with it on the channel. And we've got a few more things we're going to do with it to play and power things with when we're inside, outside and do some experiments with it. As I said, this is their UK launch, uh, so there's a link to, or UK, or U, yeah it's the UK, but they've also got an Amazon, a German Amazon for the rest of the EU, I think it is. Anyway, uh, there is a link and a 20% discount code for the launch if anyone is interested in purchasing one of these. That would be, well, it helps out Jackery and it's a way of saying thanks to them for sending us this so I don't have to buy one to try my experiments on the channel. So it's, everyone's helping everyone here doing this. They're getting a UK launch video and we're getting a power station to play with on the channel. So, uh, any questions, comments, anything like that, leave a message for me down below and I'll try my best to answer them. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I'm going to make 
more of these kind of videos in the future. So uh, thanks for watching.